So before going over what orders of insects are, I want to go over what exactly is an insect. So insects are in the kingdom Animalia, that's with all the other animals, cats, dogs, giraffes, all things like that. And then the next level down is the phylum of arthropods. So arthropods include spiders, insects, uh, lobsters, all sorts of things like that. And then the next one is class Insecta. So this includes all the different insects in the world. Below, in, below class, the next grouping is order, and there's about 25 to 30 orders of insect in the world. I'm only gonna go over about eight of the most familiar ones that you're most likely to see around. And some of the definitions of an insect are that it has three body segments, the head, thorax, and abdomen. It'll have three sets of, uh, three pairs of legs all attached to the thorax, and usually two sets of wings also attached to the thorax. Some insects might only have one or no wings. Some of them only have two wings during certain parts of their life cycle. And then the last thing is that they have two antenna. All right, the first probably most familiar order of insects is Lepidoptera. That's the moths and butterflies. So Lepidoptera, like most of the insect orders, is named after some defining feature of the wings. So Lepidop Lepid means scale, and so if you look really closely at all the wings of moths and insects, you'll get this little, little tiny scale pattern on there. So that's uh, if you accidentally brush up against a moth or butterfly, sometimes a, a dust will come up, off on your hands, and that's the scales coming off. So this includes the moths, butterflies, and skippers, and around the world there's about 160,000 species. It's a, a pretty large group, but there's a lot of insects out there. Butterflies and moths all have two pairs of wings, and of course the three body segments. Some moths will have uh, feathery antenna, but not all of them. And then butterflies usually have little knobs at the end of their antenna. The next order is Coleoptera. These are the beetles. So coleo means sheath, and that's describing the really hard shell that is on the first wing. So the first pair of wings, the hard shell, the elytra, which is often really strong due to the intricate shape of the elytra. And then the second pair of wings is very membranous. And so that's gonna be like the translucent wing that you can see uh, veins in. And so beetles come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, beetles include weevils, that grouping, which is actually quite large. And there's about 390,000 species that are described in the world. That means it's been specified, this is the species, it looks like this, it's found in this area. But we're, uh, scientists actually estimate there's about 1.5 million species in the world. So that means there's a lot of species out there that haven't been discovered or defined yet. Beetles are a really cool, really cool, very diverse group. The next group, or the next order is Diptera. And so die means two. And so there's always exceptions to the rule. Usually insects have two pairs of wings. The true flies, the diptera, only have one pair of wing. What would have been their second pair of wing is now uh, just kind of vestigial knobs called halter, halteries or halters. Uh, those are little knobs that help them balance and maneuver in flight. That's why flies are so hard to squat. It's, they're very maneuverable in the, in the air. So, not all flies, this kind of looks like a, a typical house fly or fruit fly, but flies come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This might look something like a crane fly, and they often have a long uh, sucking mouth part, like a proboscis. And there's over 150,000 species worldwide of flies. The fourth order I'm gonna talk about is the Hymenoptera. So hymen means membranous, and just like the beetle's second wing, both wings of Hymenoptera are membranous. So these are gonna be the bees, the wasps, the ants, and the sawflies. The name sawfly might be somewhat misleading. They're not actually flies. They're actually in the groups with wasps and bees. So like I said, their first and second wing are both membranous. They have the three body parts. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You got the really fluffy bumblebees, the really slender wasps, and this order is actually includes the smallest known insect, which is a very tiny fairy fly, which is actually a wasp, and it's less than one millimeter long. This one has over 150,000 described species as well. 
but uh, we probably haven't discovered all of them, and scientists estimate that there's about one million species worldwide. Okay. Four more orders we talk about. First one is Hemiptera. So hemi means half in Greek, and this includes the true bugs, aphids, cicadas, and leaf hoppers. So the reason they're described as half wings is that half of their first wing is elytra, like the beetles, but the other half of that wing is membranous. And so, so this is where you often get this beautiful diamond pattern on things like stink bugs or assassin bugs that uh, is because of the elytra and membranous. So then their second wing is fully membranous, like the, the uh, wasps and bees. Then you also have things like the aphids. Earlier I mentioned that maybe not all the life stages of an insect have wings. Uh, aphids have a very interesting life cycle that I'm not going to go into here, but only certain generations will have wings. So most aphids you see probably won't have wings. And there's about 107,000 species of hemipterans worldwide. This here is another exception to naming rules. Most of these orders have some descriptive term and terra, meaning wing, but odonates just have the word tooth in them, which is somewhat misleading. They don't have true teeth, and they're not, they actually have um, chewing mouth parts and things like that. And they're not the only insect to have that, uh, but they have very large mouth parts because they eat many other insects. They actually go off after just about anything they can catch while flying, um, and they dive after them and are very successful hunters of other insects. So this group includes the dragonflies and damselflies. They have two pairs of wings as well that are both membranous. Dragonflies tend to have shorter, thicker bodies and they hold their wings flat, whereas damselflies have very long, slender abdomens and hold their wings upward along their back like that. There's only about 3,000 species of bees worldwide. The next order is Ephemeroptera. Ephemeral means very short-lived or not lasting very long, and that's due to an interesting factor of their life cycle, is that the adults will only live between a few hours and a couple weeks. Most live only about two to three days. And so this group is the mayflies, which you probably see around Iowa uh, starting in May, but into the summer, and you'll get very thick swarms of them at certain times of the year. So these guys, have uh, wings that they hold upwards along their back. They're often very triangular shaped wings. And then most of them have three caudal filaments coming out like tails, but the third one is often so tiny it's not visible. And these can be quite long, just as long as their body is. There's around 3,350 species of these in the world. Our last order, order is the Orthoptera, and this means straight wings and it's not as descriptive as some of the names. They just have very long, thin wings along their back. And this includes the grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids. So this is kind of your typical grasshopper. They have really strong back legs for jumping really, really far distances. And their first wing um, is similar to the beetles in that it's kind of a thicker, leatherier texture, but it's made of a different substance called tigmina and then their second wing is just membranous like the others. Then this group also includes the katydids. These are some really funny looking insects. They often disguise themselves as leaves, and so that you'll see a, a big green leafy insect, not this big, but pretty large, uh, often making a katydid, katydid noise in the summer. And there's about over 20,000 groups or uh, species of this order. All right, that's it for anything else. Um, if you have questions about insects, bugguide.net is a really great resource. That's what I use for most of this information. And it's hosted by the University of, or Iowa State University Entomology Department. Have fun looking at insects. <laughs>